<laughs> How's it going? Yeah, really good. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. My pleasure. My pleasure. Yeah, so I was just, I actually just went on live and um, waited a couple of minutes for a little intro. So I'll do it again uh, for everybody that's just joined. This is Ed Maidley from the Movement and Wellbeing Club. Nice to meet you guys. <laughs> um, so briefly, we're going to be talking about posture and also backaches. So we've all been suffering with this in lockdown. Like, Ed, I have seriously, my, my desk is completely different to the one that I would usually use. And also, looking at my phone all the time, like looking down, looking, like personally, I have been feeling this ache at the top. So, you know, what's your take on stuff like that? I'm going to show you exactly why, Caroline. So this might be useful for everyone else to do straight away. So basically, if you imagine, you've got all these muscles here at the top of your neck. Now, they're under constant tension when your head is forwards. So your head weighs around four to six kilograms worth of pressure. So that's, that's, that's when you're in perfect posture, by the way. So that's how much it is on your neck. Your neck's able to deal with the pressure, fantastic. When you start to lean forwards, it multiplies the weight on the neck. So, say for example, if you're just sat there and you're doing your typing, okay, so you go in forwards 30 degrees, that's that position. That's 17 kilograms worth of pressure for your neck. That's by just leaning forwards 30 degrees. Now, if you go 60 degrees, like what most people do when they're on their phone, that's 28 kilograms worth of pressure. Oh, my goodness. Which is crazy. So that's exactly why you're getting all that tension. Now, if you put your hand flat on the top of your neck, yeah. and you start you can do this at home as well, this is just to show you how much of an issue poor posture is. When you start to lean forwards, you can, you can feel the muscles in the top of your neck tightening. Can you feel that? Yeah, I can actually. It's like the two, the two muscles that go down the back of your neck. You can feel them sort of like jutting out absolutely yeah. so they're under constant tension now if you imagine you're holding a bicep curl all day because you sat on your laptop all day mm -hmm. what's going to happen to your bicep it's going to tense up I get <laughs> well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's what i'd say um regarding the upper back and neck so common yeah well obviously like that is my main complaint um and like okay, so we you know in normal day life everybody uses their phones a lot we're using them more but in your experience what are like the most common habits for people so down is the number one one thousand percent because it's unavoidable it's only your mom that walks around like that on the phone <laughs> do you know what i mean so yeah. <laughs> Phone is massive. Yeah, no definitely. one walks around like that all day. They're just not going to do it. Um, so my number one is phone. Number two, closely behind, is desk-based work as well. Because again, you get stuck into it. Anyone that's you know that enjoys their job even slightly, or at least you know gets involved with their job um, mentally, they slip yeah. into it. So that's yeah. a big number two. Well, I'll tell you what, whilst you're on that topic, I'm sat here talking to you, and I'm just like, you know, and I don't really need to be like that. So I think I'm probably a bit too to being hunched over. Show me, show me your side profile. Just do, yeah. do what I do now. Like that. So can you just brush your hair out of your ear? Oh, there we go. Okay, so what you're looking for is the ear, does that go in line with the middle of your shoulder? So in your cell, I think, you, no, I think you're, you've got what we call a forward head carriage. Oh, no. so that's, yeah. Now, like I've not got perfect posture, but I've got reasonable posture. Yeah. So if I'm sort of relaxed like that, you can see that my ear is relatively in line with my shoulder. Yeah. And that's me natural. I mean, I could definitely improve. Like I could be more like that. But that's my natural. I'm six foot four, so that, that's obviously quite difficult. But with yourself, I would suggest that the head has come forwards a little bit. Therefore, we're under threat of putting around 17 kilograms worth of pressure on you. And that's what's probably those issues. Yeah. When you attach like, a figure to it, like 13 kilograms, it really makes you think, like, I, I, you need to be aware of how you are actually... Also, it's interesting you said there, like, your height does... 
being different heights, does that affect your body as well? Absolutely. That's a very good point. Most definitely. Again, partly because, so I've always been tall, so I remember I had that proclivity when I was younger to start to lean forwards because you don't want to be the one that sticks out like a sore thumb. Yeah. How <laughs> Uh, when you get older, you start to recognise that actually, you know, being tall is a great thing. But a lot of the time, the damage is done. I walked to the shop today, and I saw someone who's like six foot six or two inches taller than me, and his posture is appalling. Yeah. But I can't blame him because the world isn't designed for someone that's six foot six. Yeah. Or <laughs> shorter, so he's like that. His car's probably making him hunch. Certainly, his his desk, at his workplace, isn't designed for six foot six person. Yeah, yeah, no, and also, you you mentioned, like, being in the car. It's another place where we're sitting down, isn't it? And, you know, if you're concentrating on driving, you're unlikely to be thinking, oh, I need to, you know, stretch back. But I guess then, like, what are the ways, what are the best ways to help people remember to think about, you know, I need to keep my back straight, I need to do this. What, what Where does that start there's a few that I really like. However, just just sorry, just before we move on to that one, the third one is um, emotion. Yeah, sorry, just... well, I was, was going to ask you about that. Yeah, well, go, yeah, go into well, it. Maybe we should answer that with a whole, you know, will we allocate that maybe after? No problem. One, yeah, that's yeah. one thing to talk about, but that almost is a separate issue. Regarding the, the cues, it's, it's, it's interesting because there's two schools of thought. One is just absolute strength, just work on the muscles that are weak. The muscles back, so we're talking the muscles that bring your head backwards, the muscles that bring your shoulders backwards. However, after looking at all the research, being a geek that I am, I know that it's that as well as um, as well as uh, constant reminders, shall we say? That's the less technical term for it. It's a neurological phenomenon that when you put your socks on in the morning, how long does it take for you not to feel your socks? How long does it take you to not feel your socks? Yeah. You know, as soon as you put your socks on, you can feel them as they go over your feet, but how long does it take until you stop recognising the sensation of socks? I have no idea. Exactly, exactly. that's the point. I have never thought of that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. well, you don't think about it. It's like, can you feel, you know, your top now? Can you feel the, the chair? You know, you start to focus on other things, and that's because yeah. our mind says, this isn't a perceived threat, therefore we're going to turn off that sensation, and that's how the brain works. Very similar thing with posture. Because it's not essential for life that we have good posture, we keep forgetting. Mm. Just like we forget our socks are there still, yeah. you know? <laughs> so that's why we need constant reminders. So it's very important that... So what I say to my patients is a little buzz on your phone every 20 minutes. So line went off a bit there. Did you hear me? Oh, yeah, the line did go. So you were saying a buzz on the phone to remind you about posture. Absolutely. Whether it's just a noise or it's a little vibration, anything that you're going to start to associate that with sitting upright is going to be fantastic. Now, another one that I use, which is, again, DIY, thinking of, you know, of your audience here, I think that – so a really good one I've advised, if you get a plaster – I, you need a partner for this, really. Okay. Um, you get a plaster, and you go into good posture. Okay, so you sit in a posture that's okay, right? Now, you want to bring your shoulder blades back by about two centimeters. So you sat there, reasonable posture, shoulder blades back by two centimeters because there's a bit of a slack when you put the plaster on. Right. So you put the plaster on over the shoulder blades. can be a small one, can be a large one. Now, the reason why it's a plaster is it's kind to your skin, but also... It's not a constant nagging sensation there. You yeah. don't feel it in reasonable posture. But when you start to slouch, bam, you feel that sensation. So you come up again. It's that reminder again. Okay. That's yeah, I can see you'd need somebody to put that plaster on for you because it could end up anywhere, couldn't it? <laughs> oh, no, there's no chance of me doing it. And you know, you know what I was worried about? If my hair was to get caught in the plaster, <laughs> it won't be around with something odd in my hair. No, but that's a really yeah. good tip. So, so far we've got, um, use your phone, put a timer on where it will buzz, remind you to sit up straight, do your exercises, and also the plaster on your back. Is there anything else you can do? 
so maybe delving into the exercise thing will be the third one after that so more specific and by the way anyone's more than welcome to give me a follow I'll, I'll write it down afterwards and what I can do is I can send specific exercises for this um, this is this is general so this is without looking at individual cases but these exercises are very good and what they do is they just strengthen the muscles that bring your shoulder blades back so if you imagine it's a bit of a scale that the, fr the front muscles are weighing you down a little bit because you're constantly leaning forwards you're shortening these muscles no one's straightening strengthening sorry the back muscles yeah okay brilliant so some exercises okay cool yeah definitely um we'll have to go through what your like all of your social media handles are because i mean I've got great tips and advice on your socials so yeah everybody must go and check them out. Um, so, what we were talking about before, we were talking about emotions and how they can affect your posture as well. I think you've you've given me some insight before, which I've never really thought of posture like that. Um, I think it would. I think it's linked to emotions, and everything. So, just yeah, talk about the link between emotion and posture. So, um, I, I think we all know it exists it's not that we don't accept it because no one's really pointed it out a lot of the time if you see two people walking down the street the exact same person they could be twins okay now person a is slouched like that and they look a little you know they look perfect you know their, their facial gestures are fine they're just walking around like that mm. person B is walking around like that now i'm going to ask answer a question with a question caroline what 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 words would you your um what words would you put towards the, you know, either party, if that makes okay. sense? Okay, so, yeah, no, so, so if I saw somebody slouching around, I think that they maybe weren't in the best mood, they might not be feeling well, they were, you'd probably think they might not want to talk, it's not a very open way to be, whereas somebody who's upright, straight around, they probably appear to be quite confident, open, like, you know, chat to them, so quite different if you see people's postures of them. Nail on the head. Well done. That's exactly it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the thing is, you're absolutely right because it's it's our own intuition that dictates that. You know, no one no one's fed this to us. This is a, a natural thing. Like, you know, how to eat food or drink water. You know, it's 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 a natural um, phenomenon that occurs in everyone. No one walks around thinking, you know, that's a desirable posture when someone slouched over like that. You know, um. I mean, a, a really good way of looking at it is what, what happens in films. You always look at the superstar, you know, Batman or whatever. Always got a great posture, you know? And, and that's what it represents. So, that, so posture isn't just a physical thing. It's very much an emotional thing. Basically, it's, your, it's the perception of a, a, an individual. That's what your posture is showing. It's basically saying, if I've got bad posture, I'm no threat. Um, like you say, uh, don't come and talk to me. You know, these are the things that people associate with poor posture. Um, on the other, on the flip side, I mean, with good posture, you're more likely to win friends, get a date, get a good job, have a successful career. Like I say before, I'm a bit of a geek, Caroline, and one of my favourite studies ever. I love this one. They had a doctor talking to a patient. Okay. You know, um, they had the same doctor, but doc well, the first tape, which was on mute, by the way, so no one could hear what the doctor was saying. Yeah. In the consultation with the patient. However, video A, he had poor posture. Video B, he had good posture. And the feedback from the people watching the tape, again, bearing in mind that he was on mute, was the uh, uh, doctor A was less was less good at their job, more likely to be. Um, to be criticised by the governing body and just honestly and, and a lack of a lack of confidence. I mean, you know, these are the words that people really associate with poor posture. Yeah. And that's exactly why powerful people have good posture. They don't sit there working on their posture. It's a natural thing because they're powerful. You know. So this is a uh, that's it really. Yeah. No, that is it's a, it's a really really interesting study. Um, yeah, as we have been saying, you know, if you see somebody slouching around, it's, you instantly think, you know, what's going on. It's like a negative sort of vibe, <laughs> for one of the best ones. <laughs> no, I don't, it's the word of the day. It's in vogue, that vibe. I'm telling you, that's it. Because you just get that, it's a je ne sais quoi, isn't it? It's that, yeah. it's that. I don't know what it is, but I like that person. I don't know what it is, but, you know, they don't seem motivated. And a lot of it is down to, to posture. You've heard what they say about 
um, the the way you communicate is eighty percent nonverbal. Yeah, a lot of that's possible. There's all sorts of things. I mean, I'm no expert, but I know that, um, for example, you know, when people are investigating criminals, they will look at the body language, won't they? And they'll use that as a way, as a means of sort of putting to putting two and two together about his point. So it's it's so super important. Absolutely, um, body language and your posture. So true, kind of mirroring as well. So they'll adapt the posture that the individual's in that they're questioning to make them feel more relaxed. If someone comes in and they're being accused of something, they're going to come in like that. And what the police woman or man do, they come into this posture and then they slowly come out of it, you know, to try and engage that posture. And that works as well. So people do start to open up. It's a mirroring, they call that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, super interesting. So it's not just about the physical well-being. It's about your mental well-being and also how people are perceiving you. And, you know, in the same way, it actually just sort of perk you up, doesn't it? So how do you feel about going on to people's questions now? I know that we've got one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. So do you, want to, um, do you want to lead the questions? For, yeah, for... Cool. So we've had one from Joe. He said, I have issues with my back across my shoulder blades. It feels like it comes, constantly needs to be straightened out and cracked. What causes this? So, I've got a model with me here. <laughs> so, this is your spine. Okay. Now, if you imagine, you've got so the cracking sensation that you have in your joints is, well, it's air releasing out of the joints. If you imagine you've got a joint here, You've got a capsule that goes around it, and in that capsule, there's air. Now, if you've got really bad posture, um, because you're leaning forwards like that, what you're doing is you're putting pressure on one side of the joint. So can you see how, instead of it being like that, it's like that. And then what you need to do is you need to straighten up, which cracks it, or get a, an osteopath or a chiropractor to crack it, and that resets it. So it's the air getting redistributed around the joint. Now... If you feel the urge to get it cracked, then that's a sign that you've got bad posture, and that is something that certainly osteopaths and certainly chiropractors can really help with. But it's not just about getting cracked. There's a few, um, there's a few therapists that are out there, so just as a bit of a, um, might sound like a bit of a tangent, but it's very relevant if you're looking for advice for this. Uh, what you don't want to do is is rely on that. Mm. So you need exercises and manipulation, so you can sustain that good posture there's no no good you coming in every two weeks and then you're feeling great for a week and a half you need to have excellent and you need to have the manipulation yeah so and as you were just talking about that i mean i know a couple of people who uh, like to have facts that feel like they need to crack and they've played a lot of sport in their lives just can sports have a big effect on this as well it does depend on what sport i'd say that I mean, if you're more active, possibly, it does increase the likelihood. Because if you're active, then you... It does really depend on, on what sport. If you're playing rugby and you're a prop forward, you're constantly in this position here. Mm. So you're going to have that bad posture again. If you're a ballet dancer, less likely for me. Well, that, it adds complexity because ballet dancers are double-jointed, which means they're more likely to crack. It's a very complex question, that, and actually probably one that I can only answer properly on a case-by-case -case basis. Yeah. I suppose so, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So basically, I think probably sport can. I mean, all sport is pretty physical and, you know, it's your back, isn't it? Yeah. Important. Um, okay, so we've addressed why do I always need to be on my back. I also have in the comments from the promo picture, somebody who's saying that everything I try for my back isn't working. She's got, it's... Um, this girl called Harriet, she said that yeah, her back is aching, everything she tries isn't working, although I couldn't tell you what she's been trying. Um, so I guess we just go over, um, you know, some best practices. Come, come and see me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, yeah, yeah, um, so it depends, so again, it's very... The only problem, the only problem with advising is that it's so general. I mean, it could be a lower back. She means it could be her upper back. Did she spe is she is she live now? By the way, Harriet. Um, I'm not too sure if Harriet is in here at the moment. Harriet, if you are in the live at the moment, can you tell us what you've been doing? So we'll give it a few minutes for. Her. <laughs> 
I, in all honesty, for Harry, I'd suggest it's an individual thing. She's more than welcome to message me, by the way. That's absolutely fine, and I'd encourage that because a lot of the time people just need to be told that they'll be okay. Um, so I think, so did Harry have pain, you say, yeah? Yeah, she had back pain, and everything she tried seemed to be working. It does depend on what she's tried. Um, she's tried physio, chiropractors, osteopaths. Have they got the right diagnosis? Um, there's a plethora of things. It, it could just be that maybe she's got better short term, but then long term it's not worked. That might be because of a postural thing, because no one saw that posture. Again, I, what I'd do is for questions like that, I'd absolutely encourage um, her to message me and I can ask her a few more questions yeah, in advance. Definitely. Um, okay, so I can see that Joe has sent another comment in. Um, he said that back feels worse with cracking feeling after exercising that day, especially if he's done back exercise at the gym. Is so that normal? Uh, absolutely so yeah um i do hear that a lot it depends how it gets cracked though joe do you crack it yourself do you get a chiropractor or osteopath to crack it if you crack it yourself then um that i mean i i'd be i i, I think that you're getting someone else to crack it it sounds like because i don't know too many people that do get soreness after self-manipulation after sport like we were saying before, depends what sport, but if you're slouching forwards like that, like you're playing football, a lot of people do, all you're doing is just putting so much tension on those muscles that it's bound to feel a little bit sore. So you might have something called postural pain syndrome, which basically means that the joints are in that position the whole time that the muscles fail because they can't bring you back up, and then the ligaments start to fail, and it gets quite burny, like almost like, like you're getting burnt in quite a specific location in between the shoulder blades. So I think Joe needs to send you a message as well. <laughs> Is that right, Andrew? <laughs> Absolutely more than welcome. Again, this is this is the only problem. I do have to be quite specific because um, everyone's so different, yeah. you know. I mean, uh, I don't know if you don't really want to talk about, but even with your knee, it's like I had to ask you several questions, and even then, I wasn't too sure unless I saw an actual picture because. I don't know exactly where the pain is. I don't know if your knee buckles in, etc. So I suppose the benefit of this short term is that it raises awareness for people that don't have issues, but also it gives people an outlet that do have issues. They know they can come and give me a message. I think yeah. that's the... So, well, whilst we're here, just go over where people can find you on social, uh, your website. You can even say your email to that people can get in touch with you. So I'll write the old Instagram here. Um, and one thing that is really great with you as well, obviously COVID-19 has caused a huge amount of problems in terms of being able to see you physically, which is, as I said, key to the work that you do. But you are very happy for people to send videos of the parts that are not quite feeling right, aren't you? Absolutely, yeah. Um, Keep them clean now. <laughs> <laughs> don't want to see. I'm <laughs> joking. Um, um, like, trust me, I've had all sorts of. I've, I've, I've got many gluteal pictures, should we say? <laughs> 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 well, there we go. <laughs> um, but all but confident, all right. <laughs> all confident. Yeah, they won't be getting posted up again, don't we? Um, Brilliant. That's good for us to know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, yours are safe, Caroline. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, absolutely. Yeah, more than welcome to message me. I'll be very honest, and if it is going to take a bit of time, then I will suggest um, that we have a, a, an online consultation, which I do have to charge for, but it's not as much as you think. And ultimately, it's, it's best because if I give you exercises, like generic exercises that makes it worse, no one wants that. Yeah. But absolutely, if I can help people out for free, that's why I'm here on Instagram, really, you know? Yeah, definitely. It's a great place to be sharing practices and also getting in touch. Um, I think we have another question here from Joe. Joe's got lots of questions tonight. Are foam rollers good for helping posture? Again, I've tried them, but I don't feel they work very well. So I'm not a fan. So my master's dissertation was on how to reduce muscular tension. So I'm actually an expert in this. Anything passive, now what I mean by passive is foam rollers, stretching, um, 
massages, anything where you're completely relaxed doesn't really work. Okay, It gives you what we call an analgesic reaction for 60 to 90 minutes. So stretching feels great short term, but if you look at the empirical data, post 90 minutes, it actually has a very limited effect. And your range of motion improvements goes and your pain improvements goes as well. So the best thing to do isn't foam rolling, isn't stretching, isn't massage. It's a good combination of a good manipulation. It's when it gets cracked with exercises and the postural cues. So if you have those three things um, in your armory and you're willing to do it, that will definitely help with your posture and the majority of pains around this shoulder blade area as well. Right, okay. That's really interesting. It's a bit of a funny one, that. Most people are a bit like... How does that make sense? Stretching, I've been doing it all my life and I feel great. Do you know what? If you want to be flexible, it's the, the lottery of life. It's, it's a genetic thing, really. Oh, okay, so it's not really trying, to, you know, stretches and everything. It's not necessarily going to help. No. The best indicator for being flexible is genetics, completely. Yeah. Um, okay. But yes, if you want to get flexible, stretching doesn't work, I'm afraid. Fair enough. Okay, that's really interesting. Okay, I'm just going to do one more quick... Um, roll through people who've joined and if there was any questions that we have missed um okay yeah no, there's, there's one here so what this is from connor what stretches should i be doing morning and night i've just spoken about stretches <laughs> <laughs> so okay so just again break the, the point <laughs> Yeah, well, again, kind of. If, oh, Christ, yeah. Um, it depends on the on your on your on your objective. What do you want out of it? If you want to get more flexible, then again, it, you'll feel great for sixty to ninety minutes. But after that, you'll you'll be the same. If you want to be more mobile, the idea is that you do exercises that that are high in mobility. So we are just talking, you know, actually moving your body. That could just be doing a few squats. That could be doing some, you know, what have you. Um, so again, if your objective is to get more mobile, then you're going to be a bit limited, but just, just move. That's going to be the best thing. And look after your posture. Uh, again, looking at people who are flexible, you can, you can utilize your flexibility by having better posture. Because your shoulders aren't forward, so that means that your shoulder range of motion isn't as bad, and your hamstrings aren't tight because your hips are forwards, if that makes sense. So if he really, really wants to stay flexible, or get flexibility, then um, again, happy to get a message, but it's going to be a case of making sure your posture is correct. Wicked. Okay, thank you for that, Ed. And another question here. Is poor flexibility a sign of bad posture? Is it generally a bad sign if you are relatively inflexible? Joe loves it, doesn't he? He is. <laughs> Come on, great, actually. Fantastic, I love it. So, is poor flexibility a sign of bad posture? Um, not, no, not really. So, it's generally a bad sign if you're. Uh, oh, I see. So, not re there's not really much of a link. I wouldn't say there's not really an association. Um, probably because, well, apart from what we just said, you know, if your if your joints are out a little bit, then of course it's harder for you to have the exact same range of motion. But not really. Um, I'm really sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit stuck because I'm really trying to understand exactly what you're getting at. So are you saying that you're, you're, um, you're, you've got bad posture and as a result you might be inflexible? Is that what you're getting at? Because um, you're always not to buy these questions, isn't there? And I'm just trying to work out exactly what you, uh, what you want answering. I don't know. I think what I understood the question was that, uh, possibly whether when you're looking at somebody who's got bad posture, would you associate their lack of flex flexibility with it? Well, I wouldn't make that association straight okay. away. No. no. Um, if, that's, yeah, if that's what you meant, then... Uh... Oh, here we go. So it's about... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I get criticised for not being able to reach behind my back. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, okay yeah so that's the angle you're getting at so basically you're you're not that flexible okay so you're not that flexible and you're worried if that is gonna um turn into maybe bad posture the answer is no really again flexibility is such a genetic thing it's so genetically led that it's like Usain Bolt if Usain Bolt never trained as a runner he'd still be very very quick you know it's just his genetics if you know if a ballet dancer who can pop their shoulders out and bring it back in they're always going to be that flexible. 
So there's no, there's no direct association now. However, as we did mention before, if your shoulders are forwards like that, then you are going to find it harder to reach your back. I mean, even if you do it yourself, Caroline, you do that, you bring your shoulders forwards, you're not going to be able to reach your back. If you're holding, if you're going good, good posture, a little bit easier. So apart from that, but that's about 5% of it, 10% of it. Yeah. I wouldn't necessarily say so. Interesting. Okay, yeah. I, I know what, before that question, I probably might have tried to associate flexibility and posture, but clearly it's, okay. not, it's not quite it, the same thing. Um, okay, so I reckon I'm going to do another uh, look through the questions, if there's any more. I don't see any more. So one last chance for people to send in questions about back posture and posture in general. So as they're, as they're answering then, uh, Caroline, what, what are your thoughts on, maybe what are your thoughts before and what are your thoughts now on posture then? Well, my thoughts now, uh, definitely something that has really stood out to me is the idea of posture being linked to your mental sort of health and sort of the way that you are perceived in the world um so and it's not something that i'd really thought about well posture i just think of the physical but with yeah. it uh comes a lot more than that it's about how you are presenting yourself to the world and also how you even think about yourself so i think for me uh, just understanding that as a real thing is really really helpful for me um okay. i think my worry my concern for myself is sort of being aware of when to check in on my posture. A really good tip from you is setting the alarm on your phone. Like say, right, you know, switch it up, get your back straight. So I think that's a really good one. Um, I'm not going to try the plaster one. Pardon? I'm going to try the plaster then. <laughs> yeah, the plaster, the plaster would be great. It's a really great idea, but I just think if my hair got stuck in plaster and then I was walking around with the plaster swinging in my hair, I don't think it'd be good for my street cred. <laughs> yeah, well, I'd like to see that. <laughs> um, okay, so Joe has another question. So he said, do you think there is an issue with guys at the gym who believe the key indicator of strength is how much they can bench press and back back posture in guys? So, so true. So true. So, again, if you look at strength... Um, so we're, we're a species that's designed on, on function like, like every other species. So our function wasn't just that and that and that and that or squatting up and down. It's 360 degree. And one thing that I'm actually going to look to do a series of exercises that no one gives you. Because if you think about this, you've got three planes of movement. Okay. Now, as Joe says, bench press, squats, deadlifts, bicep curls, tricep, that's all one plane called the sagittal plane so it's just forwards and backwards bicep curl forwards and backwards bench press forwards and backwards so that's only a third of of your you know your, of any movement you can do so yeah you've got the occasional flies but that's another one that's your frontal plane that's basically moving out to the side that can really enable the big muscles to, to function again so you need to work on these muscles as much as you work on these muscles and then you've got rotation exercises and you, people neglect that as well. So the short answer is absolutely people do neglect that. And you do need to do a plethora of exercises, not just from backwards. So I'm, uh, I'm very much with you on that one. Interesting. I'm sorry, there was... Um, sorry, strength is... Yeah. And bad back posturing guys. What do you mean by that, sorry? Um, do you think there is an issue with guys at the gym who believe the key indication of strength is... Uh, oh, okay. so I, I think maybe you covered that when you said there's a plethora of different um, exercises you can do for your back. It's not just all about bench okay. press, because I, I reckon there's probably a lot of guys who are just doing bench press and maybe end up with a posture that's not so great. I think that's what he's saying. Absolutely. I'd agree with that because the strong muscle is a short muscle. So because the insertion of your chest muscle when you do bench press front of the shoulder to here and here when that shortens the shoulder comes forwards so that's when you get people that are in that hunched posture the whole time yeah. also abs are quite bad as well if you're doing abs all the time all you're going to do is flatten your back and go into that slouching position again so uh it's important that you do your back as well as your abs yeah well ed on that point if i've been doing an ab workout honestly 
the pain that I can feel in my neck is terrible. And I think, how will I ever get that six pack that one if I keep getting <laughs> neck pain and shoulder pain? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, that, that's because you're in that you're holding you're in that hunch position. If you if you had a Caroline cam, which sounds great, but if you were to have that while you're doing sit ups, you, like I would if I had an Ed cam, you could see yourself leaning forwards like that. So you're constantly hunching, right. there, putting the pressure on the on the back again there. Okay, very good. Okay, so and um, go again. Do they fail to work on back muscles? leads to back, bad so, back you know what so it's a bit of a fallacy this in a lot of a lot of people that train really hard like that because what they'll do is they'll say yeah I've, i do a back day i also do a chest day yeah but how much are you lifting on your chest versus how much are you lifting on your back so if you're doing bench press and you're benching 100 kilograms let's make it simple and you're doing you're benching that five you know, five times a week now if you're only now if you're only pulling 80 kilograms it doesn't add up you know so despite the fact that you're training back as much as your chest if you're not as strong you're not balanced yeah. it's like doing 10 one-legged um uh squats on one side and six on the other yeah, what's going to happen so true. that is so true and just... how many people do you know that do... <laughs> yeah no that's really really true i mean i not even really. Why do people forget about that? Why? No, because they can show off in the in the pub later. <laughs> <laughs> They're not going to walk around like, hey, look at my back. 